Monticello Christian Church family, welcome to our online worship service this beautiful Sunday morning. I want to remind you that next Sunday, January the 29th, we have our one service. Uh, each fifth, each month with a fifth Sunday, we have a one service where we gather as one body of Christ. That will be at 10 a.m. next week. 9 a.m. there will be Sunday school for all ages. Now, we also want to make sure that you know that at that service, following that service, I should say, uh, you're invited to come into the fellowship hall. Uh, for a potluck, if you'd like to bring a dish, it is greatly appreciated, but we're going to have some time of fellowship since we're here as one service, as one body of Christ. Let's begin our time together with a word of prayer. O oh God, our light and our salvation, shelter us in your love. O oh God, our stronghold, protect us from danger. We come with shouts of joy to worship you this day. We come with song and music to celebrate your love to us. We come with longing to hear your truth and to seek your presence. Be with us now, O oh God, as we sing your praises. In Jesus' name, amen. but for those that we know. God of light, we live in the darkness of despair, worried about our lives, concerned for our health and fearful that we're lost from you. The yoke of our burdens lies heavy upon us and our unwillingness to forgive, our fears of one another, our reluctance to share what we have, our divisions and quarrels. We long to turn from the dark and live in the light. We yearn to leave what is evil and follow the paths of righteousness. Shine the light of your love upon us and transform us with your love as we lift before you today those on our church prayer list as well as those that weigh on our hearts that they would know your presence today and find healing in your arms. We lay ourselves down before you as well that we would find reconciliation in you in the silence of our hearts now. God of love, we hear your call to follow. May we lay aside our differences for the sake of the gospel. Turn our hearts towards you and give us the wisdom to walk in your ways. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, for it was he that taught us to pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, you. 
opportunity each Lord's Day to refocus our spiritual vision. Things can happen in our lives any given week, personal problems, challenges, situations that loved ones or our friends are dealing with, or sometimes just the way the world seems to be going. And if our focus wanders from the Lord, from his presence with us, and from his promises to us in the scripture. So we come to this place that we might recall the night on which Christ was betrayed. When he gathered with his disciples and first taking a loaf of bread and giving thanks to God for it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you. This is my body which is broken for you. And as often as you shall eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. He then took the cup, gave thanks to God for it, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood which is shed for you. And as often as you shall drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. When Jesus established communion as a memorial for his followers to observe, he said, do this in remembrance of me. A part of that is remembering that Jesus remains with us to the end of the age. So let us partake of communion and proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Our giving this morning is in response to the blessings that we have received, both financial and spiritual, and it's an opportunity to follow Jesus more fully. Beside the lake shore, long ago, Jesus called his disciples Follow me and I will make you fish for people. Jesus calls us today, follow me. And the ministry that began by the Sea of Galilee continues in our day when we proclaim the good news of God's love. Let us give with joy as we follow Jesus. Amen. comes from the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 beginning in verse 5. This is what the Lord says, Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for his strength and whose heart turns away from the Lord. He will be like a bush in the wastelands. He will not see prosperity when it comes. He will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought, and it never fails to bear fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? This is the word of God for you, the people of God. I have a box on a shelf in my basement. 
and it's full of stuff. Just full to the brim. Spilling over, I would even say. It's full of cords and wires and bits and bobs of different tech and, and remotes. And I have, no idea, I have no idea what this stuff is, but I know it's important. I may not know where I got it or how I came to possess it or even how it got into the box. I have no idea what it is, but I know that it's important. It doesn't require a full top to bottom diagnostic understanding of each little bit to understand that I, I, I know that I shouldn't throw it away. It doesn't take that level of understanding to know that I should not throw this stuff away. Why do we do that with our faith? That, that I don't understand this or I can't grasp this. I'm going to throw it away. I'm going to cast it aside. That, that only what we can have a fully orbed understanding of what it is and what it means and how it applies to me. That's the stuff we hang on to. But if, if we can't understand it, we toss it aside. Now, now, in life, we hang on to things that clearly have no purpose. You can look elsewhere in my basement and see that is true. And that's a whole other message altogether of hanging on to things that have no purpose. Uh, uh, we have in our possession uh, a blockbuster coupon. And we go, hey, I might need this one day. You know, maybe blockbuster will come back. It's like a screen door on a submarine. We don't need it, but we hang on to it anyway. We simply can't accept, in, in, in the life of our faith, we can't accept the fact that with God and with our faith and, and with this world, there are things that we simply can't grasp. If we consider the immensity of God compared to our own limitations, we have to understand that there will be, with surety, Mystery. Things that we cannot grasp or understand. That there are things that are not mystery. All things related to, to our faith are not all mystery. But there are some things that are. And some things that are not mystery. And, and as we've seen in our prior uh, uh, messages and in the scriptures we shared, God made them plain. There are things that God has laid out plainly, but not all things have been made plain. God allows for mystery. That the greatness of creation demands there be some. Consider in the natural world an ant and the level of comprehension that that ant has of an iPhone. Can it understand even the, the most basic of functions of that iPhone? Can it even use it? It can. There, there, there is reason within our own physical understanding of how the world works where comprehension of one thing of another is it's, it's ungraspable. And so in our faith, in our life in this world, and considering the world to come, there is mystery. We've been talking about truth in this message series. Today we look at mystery. We look at trust. We look at faith. We have a great creator, and, and, and great is an understatement beyond all measure, and we are the creation. We cannot be greater than our creator. There is no one greater than our creator. And as the creator, it un God understands this creation. But the creation being lesser than its creator, we cannot even begin to understand the God that made us. We can understand that we are here with purpose. We are here because a prime mover, a divine intelligence, God made us. We can understand that we are not here by accident. In fact, it takes a great deal more faith and trust to believe that. In this 
world and creation, not everything is knowable, graspable, or fully understandable. And because that is a truth, in order to place our trust in truth, we have to trust God. May we say that to ourselves today so we can hear those two little words, trust God. If we can't understand everything, if we can't do everything, if we can't ascend to the summit of everything, we lament. We ask of ourselves, who's going to run this place if it's not me? If not humanity, if not us, who will? Now, we may not wonder that explicitly. That may not be what we say, but that's how we feel. And in that place, we have to trust God. We place so much stock in the incomplete. We place so much trust in what is flawed. And we forego the divine power, the, the divine sight. We forego putting our trust in God. In order that we put our trust in things that are incomplete and flawed. That are of human origin, not of God. Science. It, many times you say, I don't trust in God, I trust in science. Science supports what God has done. God made this world, and science is the study of this world by human methods in order for human understanding to come to a greater uh, uh, view of what this world is made of and how it works. What humans, what humanity can gather with its limited means is science. Now, is that going to be the sum total of what we put our trust in? If, if it can't fit in this, this box, I'm not going to keep it. Or are we going to trust in an infinite God? Are we going to put our trust on only the things that we can gather with our limited means? Or are we going to put our trust in an infinite God? Are we going to have faith we have an issue with control the word points us to trust god with our plans and with our desires and 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 with our our world views and with everything we are to put our all that we have before god and trust god with it we can trust our own hearts riddled with deception or we can trust in the purity of truth in the purity of god these these mysteries of god we could choose that to say i trust you god and in the things that i have no idea how to understand i'm going to put trust in you all the more or we can put our trust in the surety of humanity that this is what can be demonstrated in this isolated time and place and with these isolated implants. And this is the sum total of what is, was, or wherever will be. It's our choice. A.W. Tozer shared the best way for us to respond to these mysteries of God. The best and safest way to deal with these truths is to raise our eyes to God and in deepest reverence say, O oh Lord, Thou knowest. Those things belong to the deep and mysterious profound of God's omniscience. Prying into them may make us theologians, but it will never make us saints. You know, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. This is what it means to trust in God. To not have everything spelled out before us and have a fully uh, grasped understanding of the width and breadth of all creation. We desire that and boy, that would be really neato Frito if we had that, but we don't. We have opportunity to exercise faith in God, to put trust in God. If we are broaching the topic of, uh, a topic of truth, we have to talk about trust, trust in God. This wordage to me, I, I, I love. It's this idea of leaning not on our own understanding. 
To lean, as I understand it, is to put our full weight on something. To, to place in something our faith and trust. I, um, I had an experience and, and had the opportunity to live out an object lesson in faith and trust and leaning on something. I was in our front yard. We were doing some yard work as a family. And uh, there are several trees that line the front of my property. And I don't, can't tell you how many times I've engaged with those trees and, and, and trimmed them and, and pushed on them and mowed around them. But I happened to be working on another tree and, and just casually leaned like so on one of the trees. There, there, there's a, a single base and several trees kind of coming out of it. And I leaned on one of those trees. And quite promptly, that tree fell to the ground. As big as a dessert plate around this tree was, but the roots had, had something terribly wrong gone with them and, and it was rotten on that side. I, I leaned on a tree and it fell over. I, I really don't know how to have my self-esteem feel that way. Am, am, I, am I that much of a, of a bulk that I pushed a tree over or am I just that strong? I don't know. But the fact is, a tree is supposed to be you know, something solid there. And, and so in my mind, I'm leaning against a tree, but it fell clear over. I, I put my faith in something that I didn't fully understand the whole situation of. And well, it sure made for a great story. Let us cast aside our self-centered certainty and submit to God and our, our God-given gift of reason that we have within ourselves an intellect given to us by God. And, and God has walked us through these experiences that we can call back on and has given us of the ability to reason and to have free will in addition to God's presence with us and his established word and truth. We have all of this to engage in trusting God. God could have said, I'm not going to give you anything else, just my word. And it'd be enough. But how much more has God given us? Trust in the Lord. Taste and see that he is good. Let's set aside all of this self-centered certainty. May it be our heart's desire and our focus today to trust God. To have faith. To proclaim and live and know God's truth today. Amen.
says, Go forth into the world, putting our trust in the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.